Uh, good morning. This, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. More specifically, this is Community Matters. And we're talking about how the coronavirus has affected Lanai, the, the island of Lanai, with um, my favorite person from Lanai, Alberta DeGently. Hi, Alberta. Hi, Jay. It's always oh, with you. Yeah, great to see you again. Been a while and you look terrific. Um, life, life on Lanai agrees with you. Alberta has lived uh, on Lanai for a long time. Uh, Alberta had been the, uh, the editor of the newspaper, Lanai Today, over there. Um, she's been a farmer. She's grown a lot of what? What did I see there? Papaya, was it? You had all kinds of stuff. I had bananas. I had lettuce. I had beets. I had all kinds of, about 30 different kinds of vegetables. Okay. And she disposed of, recently disposed of the newspaper so she could run for county council, oh, which she is doing that. right now. <laughs> What's it like running for county council, Alberta? Well, it's really, really tough. My last appearance on Maui was on March 12th. I went to Maui Electric Company where we did a public hearing, public informational meeting about the uh, Hawaiian Electric Companies is doing, redoing their grid plan. So they are doing an integrated grid plan that I have been a member of their uh, stakeholders committee. So they tell us all these things. I understand that half of it, it's really uh, more of an engineering thing. And then now we're in the process of going to each community to present the plans and to explain it to the general public. So March 12th was our first and only meeting. So that's a long time ago. You know, I know uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly King, She's one of the council members there. Is she is she uh, on for the duration or is she running also? She's going to be running. I hope she has. I don't know whether or not she has uh, filed her papers, but she's been a member of the council for the past year. Yeah, yeah. she's an energy person. You know, she and Bob King have um, Hawaii. Uh, what is it? Hawaii, Hawaii Bio Energy or something. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, uh, I wanted to ask you also about some other things you've been doing. Um, um, number one is um, uh, you're, doing, you're thinking about or organizing um, a, a care facility there. I love that idea. I think Lanai is perfect for that. Um, and, you know, people will flock to your shores um, to enjoy the, you know, the, the beauty of, of Lanai. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that project? Well, it all started with when a friend of mine developed Alzheimer's. He, he actually has dementia, and he had to be moved to a care facility on Oahu. His daughter called me. He dearly would dearly love to come home. Is that? Is that I just want to know. Is that is that a Lanai uh, rooster, um, or is that a Lanai dog? That's my neighbor's dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very Lanai is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it makes us feel like we're right there with you, Alberta. <laughs> my windows and my door is closed. <laughs> anyway, okay, tell us more about the senior facility. So there's no place for him to come home to, and his wife can't take care of him by herself. So I started really, you know, thinking about it and wondering how we could do this. There is land available. I have, I can't tell you where, but I do have a piece of property available that may be available. So I've been talking to the different nonprofit agencies on the night and the healthcare agencies. And this is something that we dearly need. So my goal was, I thought that if I called up Joe Blow and it's like if I called you and said, yeah. Hi, Mr. Vidal. I am Alberta DeJetly. I'm a member of the Maui County Council. I have this plan. Would you be willing to discuss it with me? If I just called as Alberta DeJetly, Jack of all trades, <laughs> you would have talked to me. <laughs> I'm hoping to get into a few offices to be able to talk to the people who can help me make this happen. And hopefully, you know, it's not a project that will happen next year or the year after, but hopefully, in the next three to four years, we will have this facility, and you might be a resident there. I might be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're 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 only oh, and the other thing you've done on Lanai before I forget is you organized this this kind of cat clinic. 
<laughs> which I thought was really, really a good idea. Can you talk about the problem and the solution and the clinic? Okay, it, it didn't start with me. I came in later in the time. My good friend is Kathy Carroll. She and her husband, Mike Carroll, own the Mike Carroll Gallery in town. And she lived next door to a lady named Loretta Hillrung. Loretta's husband, Mike Hillrung, was the general manager of Four Seasons Resort. Every morning as they walked around the town, they would see all these stray cats lounging on cars and under cars and on the roadside. And they thought, whoa, we've got to do something about all of these stray cats. They weren't homeless cats. See, they belonged to people, but they weren't really belonging to anybody. Do you, you know what I mean? They lived in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So they started a spade new to release program, which was very successful. And uh, about, oh, maybe about a year after they started it, the state came in, wildlife division came in and told them that there were 20 cats living by the Sanai Sewer Wastewater Treatment Plant. And there was also a colony of endangered seabirds living at the sewer wastewater treatment plant. So uh, they pretty much told the ladies that go catch those cats and you can keep them. You can't release them. If you don't do that, we're just going to go out and euthanize them. So Kathy did manage to find a place she thought she could keep the cats at, but uh, it became a really big community issue with um, different cultures and personalities. Yeah. So she came to me and she asked if I could help. And I went down to see what they were doing. And the first thing I did was said, gathered up all of the volunteers that she had accumulated, gathered them all up and said, ladies, gather up your things. You need to leave this place. And they all burst out <laughs> crying. So they did what I told them to do and we moved out of that area. And then Kathy turned to me and she said, okay, so what are you going to do now? How can you help us now? And he said, I'll find you another place. It took some, some doing and some talking, but uh, we went to, I went with another lady, Virginia. Uh, her husband was the doctor on the island. We went up to Four Seasons at Coy, and we asked the general manager, Mr. Nolan, Robert Nolan, if we could build a temporary shelter where the stables was. There was an old uh, horse training pen. So he looked at us and he said, I think that's a wonderful <laughs> idea. <laughs> we practically fell over. <laughs> we were so surprised. He said, yes. We built a temporary, <clears throat> temporary shelter. We were there for two years. During the two years, we negotiated a lease with Catherine Cook. And we got a four-year, uh, we got a four-acre lease down toward Kamalapal Harbor. So oh, we're that's great. We have 650 cats. It's, That's great. That's really a service to the community awesome. and also the cat community, both. <laughs> it's become the biggest tourist attraction, the biggest tourist. Is list. that right? No kidding. How interesting. How interesting. <laughs> well, you know, aside from, you know, your, your newspaper and your running for office, my favorite thing that you're doing is, um, and the senior facility, all these things are so. They're so nutritious, honestly, and they're perfect. They're perfectly you, Alberta. But the one, the one of those things that sticks in my brain um, is is your taxi company. On top of all that, a taxi company. That story. <laughs> it's a true story too. Yeah, that's, that's it's fabulous. Started, it's owned by a man named Greg Delacruz. He's from Maui. He has a taxi company on Maui and is very successful there. So he saw there was a permit available on the Na'i and he decided to apply for it. He applied for it, got it, but he couldn't find anybody to manage the business for him. So with the newspaper, I sell my old, own ads and I saw him driving the taxi and I had told myself, so the next time you see that cab on the road, take it down and sell that madman's ad. <laughs> so I did, turned into the Catholic church. <laughs> talking story and you know I was asking him about his business this and that so I said what are you doing here are you going to go visit Father Jose which is uh, our Catholic priest and he said no I came to pray for a driver and I looked at him and said hmm that's really funny because for the past two weeks 
I've been thinking that I should start praying for a part-time job. <laughs> so you pray <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, but he never, he never got the ad. Of course, I own the paper, so he got a free ad. <laughs> and I've been managing the Lunai business ever since, but I love it. It is so much fun. I meet you, kinds of people. Yeah, sure. You meet people. You talk with them. You yeah. explain. You're, you're their tour guide. <laughs> I, I'm a tour guide, too. So I wanted to ask you, Alberta, you know, how, how is it going? I mean, the last time we spoke has to be, ooh, I want to say, uh, I mean, on, on the air, has to be like four or five years ago, I think. It was a long time ago. A long, long time. Yeah, and how is how are things going? You know, I mean, that um, Larry Ellison was a, a new a new person at that time. He just made his deal, and it's, you've had plenty of time after that to see how it unfolds. A lot of projects, a lot of issues, a lot of you know, a lot of initiatives. How has it been? How's it been on the night for you in that period? It's been a really wild ride. And it has been absolutely, absolutely amazing. It's, you know, I was very, very, I worked for David Murdoch and I was very fond of him. But Mr. Murdoch basically was running out of money and could not support this island mm -hmm. anymore, especially with the last recession. So he was forced to sell this place and he, he really, really, truly loved it. But when Mr. Ellison came, we didn't know, we didn't know what, what his vision was. We didn't know what he was going to do. Oh my God, he's done so many things. So many, you know, Four Seasons that is now renamed Four, Four Seasons Resorts Lanai. It's, it's been named the top hotel in the United States. Wow. It's just named the top hotel. And when Mr. Ellison when it reopened after it was renovated, the rates before renovation was in that $350 to $500 range. When they reopened, it was at $1,000 a night. And we yeah. all sat back and said, oh my God, are we going to be able to attract that caliber of business? And we have, we have, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, four Seasons now employs about approximately 800 people. Kulama Lanai employs about 400 people. And with this coronavirus, do you know how many people are standing in unemployment lines now waiting to get through the unemployment system? Yeah. That would have been 1,200 people from Lanai going onto the unemployment rolls. And you know what? They're all being paid. They're all receiving your paycheck. So when you look at Lanai, we we are totally blessed because we still have the state workers are still employed, the county workers are still employed, the 1,200 employees basically from that are employees of Larry Ellison's different entity, they're all employed. And there's no other community in Hawaii that can say that. So we are truly blessed and we are doubly blessed because we have not had one single case on this island. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. that that's, that's, that's really blessed. Why, why do you think that is? I mean, you do have traffic coming back and forth. No. Uh, you, you could have a case, but you don't. Why not? Because we're under quarantine. The whole county is under quarantine. So there's no traffic going through Molokai and there's no traffic coming to Lanai unless they're essential workers. Uh. So it's very closed down. All of the construction right now is closed down on this island, but they're gearing up for the next push. You know, they, their offices are still working because they're ordering equipment and supplies and things that they need for the big push after this is over. But we, we've been like the other islands. We've had testing here. I went to get a test on Saturday. Uh, we we have quarantines. We we have to stand in line to get into the stores. Uh, so the message is, you know, stay healthy, stay healthy, stay healthy. Uh, it's hard because we're in isolation here. The people families can't get together as much as they would like, but we can still go down to the ocean to fish. The men are still going out to hunt. 
five minutes out of pretty town. Pretty nice. <laughs> five minutes out of town, you can go for a walk. You can walk up to Koi and visit Miss Ellison's little miniature horses, horses and donkeys. It's <laughs> We are truly blessed in the family. Yeah. So how are you spending your time? Are you spending your time indoors? Uh, uh, when you go out, are you wearing a mask? Uh, um, you know, uh, how, how does the lockdown affect you, Alberta? When I, I got back to the night, I was on Maui for the PICO meeting at, on March 12th. I came back on March 13th. I went to a luncheon. And after the luncheon, I walked out of there. And I felt so deathly ill that I called my grandson to take me to the emergency room. I, I went to the emergency room and I had intestinal flu. And three of the people who were also in the same party with me, they also had the flu. So for the next uh, 12 days, you know, I was basically in isolation because we didn't know for sure what kind of flu we had. So we all isolated ourselves. And it was, I watched about 10 hours of television every day. <laughs> I wasn't feeling well enough to read. And I couldn't work on anything. So I just watched television. So about uh, 14 days later, I got up and I said, I have to have a schedule. <laughs> so right. since I, can, yeah. I have three dogs, I take them out for walks morning and night. So I started doing that again. You know, I'm the kind of person I jump out of bed at six o'clock in the morning and I hit the road running and I run until seven or eight o'clock at night. And all of a sudden I had all this free time. It's, it's really difficult. I live alone, so who do I talk to? And now I have Zoom. <laughs> Well, now you have Zoom. Have you have you been making a lot of Zoom calls? Have you have you had meetings on Zoom with people? Yes, I, I'm joining a Toastmasters club on Maui, and it's going to be <laughs> online. And we had 14 people in our last meeting. It was fabulous. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's like a perfect storm. I'd rather. I'm, I'm, I think I'd rather have intestinal flu than than COVID anyway myself. Oh. So that that worked out okay. But you must have been worried for a while. Well, I was really lucky. I went to the emergency room because right away I got, you know, Tamiflu and I got antibiotics. Yeah. Sent home and told, okay, drink lots of liquids, take care of yourself, just rest, rest, rest. And yeah. two people who had the same kind of flu didn't get medication until four or five days later. So they were sick for a much longer time than I was. So, you know, Alberta, you, you, you're, you're a journalist. Um, for many years, a newspaper owner. Um, you observed everything that happened on Lanai and, and really um, you got you got in to see what was going on. You you knew uh, Murdoch, uh, you know Larry Ellison, you know all the players there. It's a, it's a small town and it, it knits together very well. But beyond that, you know, you get all the media from Honolulu. Um, and beyond that, you get all the media, all the television media reports from you know, the country. So you have this kind of ideal situation where you can sit there, use your journalistic um, analytical skills and see the world from a, a special vantage point. It's a sort of clarified vantage point, I think. And so I, I wanna ask you about your opinions on some things, if you don't mind. Um, for example, you know, how well uh, has the federal government done in responding to the uh, COVID pandemic crisis. Do you have any thoughts about that? Federal government, they haven't done anything for us. <laughs> have people. they done anything for anybody? <laughs> no, not me. I, I mean, the county's been on top of things. Our mayor, Mayor Victorino, Mike, has, has been really wonderful, but I wish he would like start making videos like the Kauai mayor. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think the mayor of Kauai has done a wonderful, wonderful job on keeping his community together. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering why on the night, why, because we have no coronavirus, I wonder why some of the regulations can't be loosened up for us. So at least on our home island, we can have a little bit more freedom. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, we're just schmoozing here. 
And what, what about the state? What about, uh, you know, David Ige? What about uh, his uh, Bruce Anderson, director okay. of health and Josh Green and all that? I got to confess, I love Josh Green. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Green has been on our show many times, many times. Uh, it's very interesting. And David Ige was on our show when he first ran for office. We did a thing called, I don't know if you remember this, we did a thing called Statewide Conversation. And he, he came on our show and he, it was his idea, it was a good idea. He broadcast his you know, political views, his, uh, his platform points to the whole state, just like this, streaming. And then he had a system where people could ask him questions from all parts of the state, sort of like all the sewing circles met, you know, and they all got together and asked him questions and he answered the questions. I said, what a great model, um, you know, that, that I mean, I, I, but you know, the problem was it never happened again. And uh, therefore, you know, uh, one suggestion I would give you is to do that, to use that because people, it's, it's a no expense kind of thing and people, you know, you can reach people. They can reach you. It's an engagement both ways. And, and it, it takes me to um, you know, the whole thing. You know, you mentioned you're using Zoom. You're getting really good at it. You look great at it. You must, you must have the right lights and camera and everything. But, I read instructions. <laughs> <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> More light. <laughs> well, it works. So my, my question to you is, um, you know, we are going through a crisis. And even though it's, uh, you know, it's, it's um, Lanai is in great shape. It is blessed. It's so interesting to find that, you know, I'm so delighted for you. Um, but query, how are things going to change going forward? What's, what's going to happen in this state that we should, mm, that we should see in the future, that we should um, take advantage of, that we should work to achieve? Uh, we, we're going to have a change, right? The pandemic is changing everything. We talked to a woman in, in Brussels an hour ago, and things are changing all over Europe. Uh, things are changing on the mainland. Things are changing. So how do you think those changes will, you know, play out? Uh, what will it be like in Hawaii? What will it be like in Lanai? You know, seriously, Gay, Maui County is totally oversaturated with visitors. And I think now that all of the visitors are gone, it's taken us back to another time. You know, I, I lived on Maui from 1968, but I was out on the Hana side. But when we went to Kahului to go shopping or to be in Kahului, it would take us less than seven minutes to drive from Kahului to Wailuku. Now it can take as long as half an hour. You drive out to Hana now, there's a thousand cars on the road. Mm. We, this gives us a really good opportunity now, not just in Maui County, but on Oahu and on Kauai and on the Big Island, to step back and look at tourism as a whole and think about how we can improve the quality of the visit for our, the visitors that are coming, rather than continually trying to increase the quantity we we are oversaturated, so pull back, pull back, pull back. Give people a better product. Do you, do you understand where, where I'm coming from on this? Sure. I mean, a lot of people feel that way. I, I Stender was on the show. He said the same thing, from, you know, formerly the Bishop of State and all that. Um, but, you know, in an hour's time, Mufi Hanneman, who runs the Hawaii uh, uh, Tourism and Lodging, Lodging and HLTA, Lodging and uh, Tourism Association, which is not limited to Waikiki. I mean, it's all over the state. And it is a, you know, uh, it's a, a, a group of uh, hotel owners and, uh, you know, people who have investments in tourism um, who are really getting hurt right now, who want to come back, who want to reopen, um, you know, and have that, have that flow of tourists again and <clears throat> the cash flow after all uh, they would argue that tourism is the engine of our economy like it or not so what would you say to Mufi Hanneman what would you say to an owner of a hotel um, you know who big and small it's not just the big ones it's it's the small ones too what would you say um, about this what should they do how should they see this uh, should they 
close down? Should they limit the number of tourists? What do, we, what do they do to make Hawaii a better place in the face of, of what we have learned in COVID? Get back to basics. Remember that a hotel is only as good as the people who work there. So take care of your employees. Take care of the people who are working for you so that you, everybody talks about the aloha spirit, the spirit of aloha, uh, hospitality. You don't get that when you're pumping a thousand visitors in and out of your hotel every day. What about the people on your front line? How do you treat them? How do, how do you treat, you know, my, my husband was in, the, in management in the hotel business. And he says the person at the very top is the person at the very bottom, the person in the kitchen washing the dishes is just as important as the person on the top. So start thinking about your employees as being part of this team that can provide a true spirit, the true hospitality. It, do that, do that. That's what, that's what made us famous not yeah. too many years ago. Hotels like the Halifulani, you know, they, they all had this terrific sense of style. And if you look at, if you look at our the hotel industry statewide, we have so many properties that are owned by foreign entities. They don't care. They take their money and they go back to whatever country they're in. Come back, come back to Hawaii. Come back to Hawaii. Yeah, Wonder, well, wonderful thought. Yeah. Reason you know when this when Mr. Ellison first came to Lanai and started doing his thing, they named the company Pulama Lanai, and I thought, what kind of a name is that? Pulama Lanai means the cherished Lanai, and that's what they do. So if you can get this feeling across the state, cherish the community that you live in, cherish the people who live, who work there, cherish the people who live there. And the rest will come, you know? Yeah, Alberta De Gently, we cherish you. You are, <laughs> you are the symbol for so many years of all the good things in Lanai. I hope we can connect with you again and, and follow all your adventures all around Lanai and elsewhere. Thank you so much, Alberta. Oh, you're welcome, Jay. We need to visit more. Yes, we do. <laughs> Next time soon, Alberta. Take Thanks. care. Aloha. Bye-bye.